New big Navi cards are launching soon and they look really fast. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So a new leak regarding the upcoming RX 6700 XT graphics card from AMD was just posted over on Twitter by leaker Patrick Schur. And by the way, there will be links to all my sources in the description below. And let's try and go for 2,000 likes again on this video. But in any case, over on Twitter, he posted the power draw of these cards. And it does look pretty impressive. But I think between this and all the other information that we've gotten from places like video cards, we can put together not only the specs, but also the performance and release date for both the 6700 XT and the 6700. So let's get right into the specs first. So starting off with the 6700 XT, in terms of the compute units, this will come with 40 compute units according to video cards. And while I couldn't find any leaked information on either the game clock or the boost clock, I'm thinking it's probably going to be pretty similar to the 6800 XT. So we're probably looking at a game clock of 2105 megahertz and a boost clock of 2250 megahertz. Now as for the memory, it's likely going to have 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 on a 192 bit bus for a total bandwidth of 384 gigabytes per second. And according to Patrick Schur, the TG GP will be somewhere between 186 to 211 watts and I'm thinking the total board power is probably going to be somewhere around 200 watts and then for the price it's likely going to come in at $450 but it could potentially be even a little bit cheaper. And then moving on to the 6700 this is likely going to have 36 compute units with a similar clock speed to the 6800 so we're probably looking at a game clock of 1815 megahertz and a boost clock of 2105 megahertz with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on a 192 bit bus for a total bandwidth of 384 gigabytes per second and then Patrick sure was saying that the TGP of this card should be somewhere between 146 to 156 watts which is pretty low and I'm thinking the total board power will probably be somewhere around 150 watts but it might be a little bit more and then the price is likely going to be $400 so that it's competitive with Nvidia's upcoming RTX 3060 Ti. Now as for performance to get a good idea of where the 6700 XT should land I think first we need to figure out how fast the 6800 is so according to TechSpot the 6 6800 should be somewhere around 16% faster than the 3070. Now the 6800 also supposedly has 50% more compute units than the 6700 XT that's coming out and then 33% more bandwidth. So looking at those specs, I would expect the 6800 to be roughly somewhere around 30% faster than the 6700 XT and somewhere around 40% faster than the 6700. So those are going to be some pretty fast graphics cards, but that does mean that the 6700 XT and 6700 will likely be a little little bit slower than the RTX 3070, though they will pack a significant amount more VRAM. Now that puts them in a pretty close competition with the upcoming RTX 3060 Ti, which is likely going to be somewhere around $400, potentially even a little bit more. And that's going to be pretty close to 3070 performance as well. So it looks like the 6700 XT, if it does end up coming in at $450 and it's not any cheaper, could end up being, you know, not the best buy compared to the 3060 Ti, unless it gets a price drop or it ends up being a little bit faster faster than I'm expecting. Now the 6700 I think is a very competitive card at $400 with that 12 gigabytes of VRAM. I think that's probably going to end up being a better choice than the 3060 Ti because if it does end up matching it or even falling, you know, just a few percentages short, I just think it's going to be an overall better card to purchase, especially when you consider that, you know, even if the 3060 Ti ends up having better ray tracing performance, which it likely will, I think it kind of in that mid-range of graphics cards, ray tracing starts to become less useful because you end up, you know, having to turn some settings down and it just ends up being not as great of an experience and you end up getting more stutters and stuff like that so I think the ray tracing is less of an argument you know once you start going to the mid-range cards and below so I think the 6700 here could be very very competitive now finally as for the release date this is what video cards had to say on the matter quote AMD has recently told board partners that Navi 22 GPU will launch a bit sooner than previously planned the manufacturer is currently expecting to bring Radeon RX 6700 series in January January 2021. So yeah, these graphics cards really aren't too far off. And I think if they come in at the right price, they could be very, very tempting purchases because honestly, when you stack them up against the 3070 and 3060 Ti, which is supposedly going to be coming out here soon as well. Well, you know, that extra four gigabytes of VRAM could make a big difference for a lot of buyers. So again, if they come in, you know, say maybe $430 for the 6700 XT and then $380 for the 6700 or even up to $400, I think in my opinion, those would probably 
probably be better purchases because you're going to end up getting that extra VRAM, which is going to be a huge help going forward. And so, you know, if you're looking at the 3060 Ti and 3070 and with that eight gigabytes of VRAM, you're starting to see games already that are getting very, very close to saturating the entire thing. And in some cases, already asking for more than eight gigabytes of VRAM. And that's only going to get worse as time goes on, as both the consoles do have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, about four gigabytes of that should be not accessible and should be for the OS, but that does leave developers with around 12 gigabytes of VRAM to play with, with both the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. And, you know, with the consoles coming out here, that's going to end up making a lot more games use more VRAM. I mean, if developers are coding for 12 gigabytes, well, you can bet that on the PC, that's eventually going to become somewhat of a standard to be playing games at high resolution in the absolute highest settings. Now, that doesn't mean you can't turn on the highest settings. It just means that, you know, potentially if you have an eight gigabyte card, if you don't lower a few of those settings like textures or shadows, you could end up with, you know, slightly lower performance than you were expecting. And that's just not ideal. So I think these 6700 XT and 6700 graphics cards are going to end up holding up better overall long term, but we'll just have to wait and see. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about these leaked 6700 series graphics cards? Do you think it's going to be a good buy or do you think that they're going to be a little bit too expensive? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.